Nas at, at a party right now. It's your bassist party. Happy birthday to him. I just want to find out how you guys actually all hooked up, you know, in terms of forming the band and, you know, get a sort of perspective or introduction as to who each member of the band is as well. Okay, cool. Nat, who sadly couldn't make it, is the drummer. And then Ben is on lead guitar and vocals. And Mark over here, birthday boy, is on bass. And myself on vocals and guitar. Hey, that is sick, man. It's uh, we really, you know, grateful that you guys are on the show and that, you know, despite it being, you know, your bassist's birthday, you guys are here and we're actually doing this. Uh, you know, have you guys spoiled your bassist today? Like, what's been happening besides, you know, the festivities and the party? <laughs> have we spoiled you? <laughs> Not really, eh? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I mean, ben was the first one to lock up at the party. Yeah, especially so early. I helped you put up paper plates. Yeah, he did. Oh, being with the yeah, I, I don't know. Now I kind of feel bad. Yeah, like, yeah. I didn't buy you a gift or anything. What? Should I have? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll do it. I would say it was that really nice uh, guitar. So, I really do. <laughs> <laughs> My uh, bass player has more guitars than all of us put together, I think. Yeah, yeah. probably. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, he doesn't need anything. Is it one of those setups where he used to be, or he is a guitarist, and then you guys just couldn't find a bassist because, I mean, Durban, and then you converted the guitarist to bassist? 100%. Yep. No, what, totally. So yeah, totally. Yeah, German bass players are very rare. Yeah. So, Lan and I played together in another group before. And, and I had to I, beg him to be a bass player. Yeah, I had one lying around, and it's a lot of fun. I actually really enjoy it. I definitely play it like a guitarist. There's no doubt about it. There's no slapping going on. <laughs> but, there's uh, no flea style. Yeah, there's no flea style. Yeah. There's picks and uh, <laughs> pentatonic scales. And that's about it. But he likes simple bass, so it works well. Yeah. There's something that I really need to ask you guys. And that is sort of, you know, what the end goal is here. I'm looking at the general life cycle of a Durban band, um, or at least from my experience or the things that I've seen. Um, with obviously the lack of venues and stuff and how someone or a group of people will form a band in Durban and then, you know, have the band practice only for them to end up playing, you know, at a certain venue or a couple of venues. But you never really find, you know, Durban bands that break beyond that ends up being something that they can do sort of like a form of an escape in a way or something, you know, that's like a hobby basically. So with you guys, um, would you say that's the approach? If it's not the approach, then, you know, what is the end goal? Single Street Park was formed by Lennon. He pulled us all in because it's his creative project, his music, his lyrics, and basically the songs that he's been writing for your life, basically. And that's what Single Street Park is. It's like your creative project. So, yeah. Yeah, and I've told the guys right from the start that, you know, only join me in this project if you're serious and if you're going to go all the way, you know. Like we had similar discussions about this and, you know, you guys asked me the same thing, actually. I said, well, look, if if we can headline festivals in South Africa, then I'd be happy. So, Landon, when you say, you know, if you guys aren't in, in this, you basically go all the way, your definition of all the way would then be, you know, headlining, you know, some of the biggest shows in South Africa then. So that would be the end goal, to headline the biggest shows in South Africa. That is why this band was created. I suppose that would make me happy, but the reason why the band was created is because you just, you know, you sit in your bedroom and write songs for such a long time. Somewhere something's got to give. You know, it's got to get out there. It's got to be played by people for people. Um, so that's the reason why the band was created. But in terms of where I and I would go as far as to say we would like to see the band go, is um, yeah, if if we could, you know, be well known within the the industry in South Africa, then play as much as possible. Band. Play as much as possible to some big crowds. And yeah, I say festivals because that's kind of what you got in South Africa, right? Yeah, listening listening audiences and basically rocking audiences are, are festivals generally. You're playing, unless you're playing, what is it? You don't really do nightclubs in South Africa anymore. Like well, especially not in Durban. Durban. Like, I don't know about Cape Town. Cape Town seems Cape to have quite a vibe going, but Durban's dead. 
a lot about nightclubs so far. From nightclubs and stuff, yeah. From KZN, I think, um, yeah, it's going, getting out there to the other provinces and playing to people. Yeah. Did you have that goal in mind when you started creating the sound? Is it a case of let's create a sound that would do well or let's try and get our sound to do well? Yeah, no, it's definitely not let's create a sound. I suppose um, with what sort of bands and artists inspired me growing up and then you kind of feel like you start creating your own sound. I don't know if it sounds like my own sound. It depends what shiny new pedal I bought. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's definitely not um, let's put together a sound that will do well. It's more just what comes out. I think we're sometimes aware that the sound is not what's on trend and we just think mm. if we just do it really well, hopefully people will still like it even though it might not be the kind of thing that's on the charts at the moment i feel like a lot of people play music that they don't really enjoy when you're watching people live you can tell they're enjoying the music they're playing so yeah it's just like you enjoy the music that you play and keep it honest as well keep it true to the the core of the song even even song to song it can actually not be the same sound necessarily but actually for the song itself yes we used to be honest yeah be, yeah be honest and play for the song yeah 100 percent you know, um, what's really interesting as well with, with what you guys were saying about how Durban is dead, I mean, just considering the fact that, you know, some of the members that are part of the band are, or we've obviously had, you know, Ben and Nat on the show before as your name on the drum. And, um, you know, the one thing that I can say automatically, you know, comes to mind when I think of them is how I'm almost always seeing a notification saying something about them playing a show somewhere, whether it be with Melanie or whatever. So that tells me that they're really good, you know, at finding, you know, certain venues or, or crowds to play and all that there. How are you guys sort of getting around, you know, that issue of Durban being dead? Oh, well, the band's still pretty new, hey, right? The band was created just into the pandemic. The goal was to get some songs slick. Like, we're going to get a lot of Lennon's material sounding really good. We came in and added our own sound to what Lennon was doing. And then we said, okay, we're going to take these songs and we're going to play as much as we can. And then with the whole pandemic, everything kind of, kind of came to a stop. And we sure. had to change our direction. And from that we decided that what we're going to do is we're going to focus on recording some of the music so that come what hopefully now is going to be the opening up of everything again. We'll actually have a set of music that we we have recorded and can be streamed and all of that, which is where the album came from. So currently we haven't been able to play that much. We did our release and everything like that. Um, but as of quite recently, our goal was to release the album. And I think, yeah, I think that that went really well. We had a good time at studio and we did a lot of work on that album. And I think everyone was ready. Very out. Chuffed yeah, we'll came came out. Out. And now we're pretty much ready to go out there and gig as much as we can, you know. Yeah, we actually had our first gig planned for April 2020. <laughs> that was yeah. like we scheduled it for Pablo Honey like back in Feb and then all hell broke loose. And I just thought, okay, well, what can we do? Let's record. I suppose many other artists said the same thing. Yeah, definitely, guys. I mean, when you say the word album, I'm taken to what mainstream media's perception of an album would be. So say, for example, an artist comes through and he says, listen, guys, I'm going to be dropping an album. Already they have the tours lined up for the entire year. Already they have an entire campaign, you know, that's going to be pushing. They have the single set out. They have everything that's just going to be released. So when you guys mention that, you know, you've been recording the album and whatnot, is this something that we can expect? Or is it more just like an album and the aspect of, you know, we have the studio everything sounds really nice everything sounds really professional and bold you know to what extent would you guys say it is an album i'd say quite possibly you'd see that lined up with the next album there's a hell of a lot of material sitting locked away in a book that needs to get out there you know so i think what happened during 2020 forced us to just sit in the studio and just record and we put it out there and that kind of was just a project in its own, you know. Um, to accommodate that with gigs and stuff now, yeah, for the sake of actually getting the band to be gig fit and get out there. But I think in terms of the album launch being planned with promo and gigs and a tour and everything to follow, you probably more likely see that with the, the next album, which won't be very long 
until that that one drops. It's only seven songs, but our set is fourteen songs. Yeah, so we've like got a most 14 of what we play set. live. Yeah. You know, people are hearing it for the first time. Yeah, it just you know either came along or only got polished after we had finished. Well, the album was very. It was a very set set of songs. It was. I think when you you did that, you had a very clear idea of what you wanted on the album. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I feel like yeah, I think Landon's right. I feel like. We didn't do it because it, there was nothing else to do because we couldn't gig. But there definitely was a feeling that we just wanted to get some of this music down. And Lennon wanted to get a lot of his stuff out there for people to listen to. So we didn't release the album expecting to have shows or anything like that off the back of it. And just because of the way, especially like in KZN as well, the way that things are still going and it's just, it's quite hard to sort of tie an album to like a toured show of any, yeah. anything, even now still. So yeah. I think Land's Right will, the album was for the album and mm. then probably next year, mid next year, I'm going to try and do the, we'll probably yeah. drop the next album with like a full tour plan. Seven to eight months, there'd be another one. And that will be way more full force. We're hopeful that places are opening up again and festivals are going full steam and, <laughs> you know. Since you have a catalogue of unreleased songs and you wrote some of them during the pandemic, how many of the newer songs made it to Big to Differ? Um, how many of them were from the pre-pandemic phase? Good question. Let's see. It would be two of them, I'd say. Five of them were written many years ago and two of them were written during the pandemic. Which two were the, the latest ones? Um, Oceans Apart and Oh Love. Oh, wow. So is Ocean, Oceans Apart inspired by that sort of distance? Because you speak about showing up on digital screens and stuff like that. Is that inspired by like the isolation and the lockdown? Yeah, in a way. Yeah, it's more about... Um, you know, it's quite a reality these days that a lot of us live, some of us in South Africa, some Australia, some the UK. I've got a lot of family, so I'm like super apart from most of my family. My dad lives one side of the earth, my mom the other side, my sister the other side. So it was actually more inspired by that. But I think it just kind of amplified during the pandemic and that kind of made it what it is. What went into the process of selecting songs from your older catalogue for this latest release? How did you choose which ones like made it to the album? I think the ones that we collectively enjoyed the most, you know, coming back to what Ben said, like stay honest and, you know, play music that we enjoy. And Oceans Apart definitely was a favourite for everyone, sort of right from the start. I was surprised because for me it was just a little, like I wrote it in like a day, I didn't think much of it. And then Big to Differ as well, which actually ended up being the, the title, the title, title track, track of the album. Yeah. was also, uh, when we started playing that together, we were just like, Ooh. Big to Differ yeah. was like what made Single Street Park what it is and the sound and everything, you know, because that song actually sounded completely different when I wrote it and just played it by myself. When Ben came and added his piece and the, the beat that Nat added, <clears throat> Mark's bass line, whatever, just completely change the song and that that kind of was like okay wow here we go this is a cool sound so that's why that made it on there definitely oceans apart we enjoyed oh love oh, man i don't think anyone really mm. enjoys oh love i was just like i wrote that song and i thought whoa this is a hit song <laughs> and then that's why out of all the songs oh love was probably the the one that took longest to to get where we wanted it to produce it felt like everything was a comp. Like if I do this, then yeah. it compromises that. So it was. Then, yeah, I yeah. find a sweet spot. Yeah, and then we kept changing spots. Uh, I mean, initially, there's a in the song. There's a, a lead pass that that runs the whole song essentially, and that never existed until until the song was recorded. Landon and listened to it. Like, hey, I'm, I'm not thinking that. We went back and we had to re-record like, that whole song. So. And then you got obsessed with phases. For the most part, okay, maybe apart from Olaf, which by the way turned out into like an incredibly cool song. I really personally after oh, you like it. I do. I mean, after you put me through that the whole thing <laughs> playing that D piece, like oh my word. 
Nothing yeah, worthwhile um, comes easy. Yeah, exactly. So, now I really enjoy it now, but the rest of the songs were, uh, I feel like they were the ones that either that we played when we started and really clicked all the ones that in the production process jumped out and were like, yes. that's really, really good. Cool. Yes, exactly. Like, yeah. what's the other one that I always uh, forget the name of? Ah, uh, Stuntman. No, the other one. Um, Super Tramp. Stand Alone this time? This time around. So now this time around. Well, Stand Alone is great. Stand Alone is one of our, uh, yeah, that's one of our fun ones to play. But this time around as well, it was. Stand Alone is about Andre Stander, the bank robber. <laughs> <laughs> so i write a lot of songs when i watch movies like <laughs> movies move me man <laughs> like um this time around is about super tramp alexander super tramp the into the wild i do feel like people need to come near us live i feel like the album is great but there's nothing like hearing a band with this kind of music no, loud no, in your not. face yeah in the dark with the band going nuts there's something that a recording just can't capture. I'm a big believer of an album being an album because an, an album has its own feel. People listen to it um, in different different states of mind, and and you need that in an album. You need all the all those things in an album. A live performance by a band is something completely different to an album as well. So in some in some cases, the songs are. Uh, almost two two different things on a on an album and then perform live. I think. Yep. Yeah, I'd agree. So when you perform live, do you have a different rendition of these songs? Do you allow yourselves to maybe freestyle or improv on some of the parts? No, we do. We we like to play around with them. Like certain songs have to come behind other songs because we'll play it into each other. We actually got that one where we borrowed borrow, an outro yeah, from, another from another song. So we finished the one song with the other one's outro, playing it over again because we enjoy it so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, do, we do all kinds of fun and quirky stuff with the songs. It's a bit different. In a live show, also you go through phases and something just happens and yeah. then you're doing this thing and everyone's just like yeah. locked in and you just go yeah. roll with it. So definitely, I think... I think the album the album is a very good representation of the collective work so far recorded of Signal Street Park. Yeah. Um, and you definitely won't be like, oh, I don't know what they're doing. I've listened to the whole album. I don't know these songs because they yeah, sound yeah. so different. So and for an example, like Oceans Apart has this, this kind of the intro song and has this long intro. But I mean, once it breaks through, you know, it's yeah, exactly. playing yeah. Oceans Apart. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I feel like the the live stuff is definitely you can you can tell what the songs are and they'll, they'll still you'll still enjoy them exactly like you enjoy the album. Um, but they are a live version, mm. for lack of a better word. They're definitely a live version of the of the recorded yeah. stuff. When you recorded at um, at Storyline, did you do live tracking in order to capture that live sound, or what was the setup like? So I'll take that one because actually Storyline is the is me and Nat. We we run the studio and it's a, it's a small studio. So in some ways it's limiting, but in other ways it's very freeing because so so it wasn't recorded as a full band love. Um, we tracked individually, mostly from the point of just having access to that for where we are and the size of the studio and all of that. But the way that we recorded it was very much very much from a like a raw pers- perspective so everything we did was yeah like very true to to what it, what we wanted the sound to be even though we couldn't run it as a full live take with the whole band we tried to capture that sound in individual parts as we did which i think we we achieved very well in, in the end i'd say so Now, guys, this is really interesting, actually, you know, just getting, you know, an inside look at what it actually took, you know, to get the project, you know, sounding the way that it it does. And, you know, uh, your guys' favorites as well, which from the sounds of it is literally every single song on there because that's what, you know, you guys mentioned literally each song. But what I want to know is, you know, with the release of, of, you know, the project um, being on the 26th of October, was there any reason behind why you guys chose that date or is it just a matter of, hey, let's just pick a random date it was just a case of okay we got to get this done now guys <laughs> <laughs> so it's literally just like okay listen this is the last take these are the last revisions shit's going live now <laughs> that was it 
<laughs> nice, straight to the point. Our bass is gonna go and enjoy his party. I'm only, yeah. I'm only the bass player. I'm not like <laughs> <have> anything important <laughs> to add. I just go, do not true, do, not do, true. Do, but still, yeah. I mean, I do say Shaka Khan often. <laughs> There's a story. Cool. All right, oh, thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate you taking the time with us, and I wish you all the best. So, guys, so, so right now, if I'm not mistaken, we've got um. Lennon and Ben, right? Correct. That's correct. Oh, that is awesome. I, I, I want to find out from you guys what it is that you guys sort of take, you know, from the other, you know, projects that you guys do. Uh, obviously, Ben, uh, name on the drum. And obviously with uh, you, Lennon, this is thanks to, to Meeks for enlightening me on this um, with SAG, man. What do you guys take from each project that you guys incorporate, you know, into... <laughs> You know this band sure i don't know well i mean personally i mean as you know um the the other project i run is with nat is very much more folk indie so single street park which is more like grunge rock sort of mm. 90s stuff well feel to it yeah, um, so I lean towards the the more chilled stuff, actually. When Single Street Park started, I was always more inclined to the more chilled songs or stuff that required a little bit more like ambient, ambient stuff. So I think uh, for myself, I bring that um, from across from the other projects. And then Lennon has given us quite a lot of free reign in this project, even though it is his project. The way we collaborate together is... Then brings the the sort of the skeleton of something he's been working on, and then we bring our personal thing. So it's not necessarily like we're bringing in from other projects per se, but just how we would perceive the song as it were. And then sometimes Lennon's like, "That's that's exactly what I wanted. That's perfect." And then sometimes we take it back and we rework it and we look at it a little bit more. And then sometimes for a few songs, anyway, Lennon was very. Sure, he was like, no, this is what was in my head. And some songs definitely are more collaborative and some songs are very much like what Lennon wanted. Yeah, it and depends think, on yeah, the song, you know. Yeah, I'm very, I think it works quite well, actually. Um, and no one really, it's quite cool. Like a lot of times you you get bands that people like butt heads. I don't feel like Single Street Pops no. like that. I feel like we're very, in the beginning, we we're very clear about how it was going to work. Lennon wanted our input, definitely. Um, he was like, bring bring your own thing. He wants to hear it. And if it what if it's not right, we will he will just be straight about it. Uh, I mean, for you, I don't even know. This is sort of your project. Like, I mean, I met Ben and Nat at White, White Mountain, Mountain Music Festival, yeah, Fest, yeah. yeah, in 2019. It was also pre-COVID, pre-COVID time. <laughs> <laughs> and I was very intrigued by their style. Like, I'm also actually, funny enough, a very folk-oriented musician. Yeah, one of my favorite artists is Cat Stevens and I like Bob Dylan and you know, those kind of bands and artists. And but then always there's this core of me that wants to, especially if the song is a bit angry, then <laughs> then I want to put that distortion pedal on. And then I suppose the nineties influence comes in quite heavily. But I'm not really like I, I, I never wanted to go over that threshold where it kind of becomes metal or like heavy, you know. So it was important for me to actually rather get someone or, or people that are more folk oriented and see if I can just make them jam a bit heavier along with me. Yeah. I mean, obviously with Ben touching on, on name on the drum and myself just bringing up, you know, SAG, as much as it's not a band and it's like a whole entity, you know, that focuses on other bands and guitarists and, and all that there. Is there anything that you take, Lennon, like yourself, from the work that you do with SAG that you implement, you know, into your music that you reckon would be effective and, and whatnot? Yeah, definitely. I think SAG has had an influence in on terms of insp- <laughs> on my pedal board. <laughs> That's true. SAG has had a huge influence on the gear that I play because you end up talking to all these other guitarists and their gear, and I suppose you get jealous and you want to go get your own gear. And on the Facebook groups, they call it gas gear acquisition syndrome. <laughs> I definitely suffer from that. But on a, on a more serious note, I think. Uh, what SAG did for me was um, rekindle my love for South African music and South African artists. And I ended up listening to 
a lot of different South African bands. I've been slacking a bit with SAG like in the last year, I think, or so, because I've been so focused on Single Street Park. But it's definitely still there and it definitely will be picked up just because of the sheer passion that I have for local talent, you know. I think that definitely did also influence Single Street Park, especially the way that we produced the album. There were quite a couple of times that I referred to South African artists and the way that they had their uh, albums produced as reference to to how I'd, I'd like things to sound on Big to Differ. That was a very beautiful answer, Lennon, man. Thank you for that. So, Lennon, considering you have access to many, many different guitarists and bands that have guitar-based music, what would you say is a signature South African rock sound? Sure, that's that's a difficult one. I, I quite like it if if the guys, I, I, at least I try and do that myself, just sing in your own accent. <laughs> <laughs> So like, honestly, I, I quite dig it if I hear the guys like, I'd like how Matthew Mole sounds South African, you know, <laughs> like there definitely is some uh, vibey sort of, I don't know it's how you would call that, like, you know, when you jam the guitar and that sort of. Yeah, it's that sort of classic, um, I think, I think I know what you're talking about, it's that sort of classic thing that uh, the only band I know that does it very very obviously and it's the short straw the short yes. straw neck yes. it's, it's almost like we've got our own version of scar punk yeah that's yeah so it's not really yeah that's just the genre with that little riff I couldn't pull that off but I definitely do appreciate it when I hear it in other local yeah, so artists music yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh, it's okay. and, and and obviously this is going to be a, an expected question, but we obviously need to find out, you know, what it is behind that name, Single Street Park. Is this something that Lennon came up with and then Ben and Nat and the bassist all sort of just ran with it? Or is this something that you guys actually all decided upon, you know, as a unit? Oh, it was definitely Lennon. Yeah, it was definitely Lennon. <laughs> I mean, the once he told us, we like, oh, we're all good at it. Um, but yeah, it was definitely Lennon's choice on band name, but you can tell the story. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, so back in the day, I was in this band. It was just three of us, literally just three guys on acoustic singing and jamming together. It was in Newcastle. I was living in Newcastle at the time. In Newcastle, I don't know if, if anyone knows that town. It, it has a lot of parks. I don't know why, but it has a lot of parks. <laughs> so you could kind of just choose which park you want to go sit in. And there's this one park where we'd always go and sit and play. Just, I suppose, because the parents just maybe didn't want to hear up noise or maybe because we wanted to smoke something while we were there <laughs> or something. I don't know. But we always ended up sitting in this park, jamming our acoustics and writing songs and just enjoying ourselves and our music. And the the street that wraps around it is single street so it's single street park oh that's very beautiful man and especially you know because it's from your hometowns so it hits home bro it makes it makes a lot of sense something really interesting and something that i really feel a lot of people overlook is artwork i'm trying to find out the correlation between you know, naming it big to differ and the artwork that you guys have on there. Got some nice greenery there. You got a little path, you know, you got the mist there. What is the correlation between the name of the project and the artwork that you guys actually chose? So big to differ, I actually wanted to call the band big to differ or a band that I would potentially be in. But it was always very important for me to find a name that just definitely wasn't taken so back to differ, I think there's a band in America that's got that name. Uh, just because I think in this digital day and age, it's nice if you can grab up all the handles and the domains and all that sort of stuff. So that's where Single Street Park, I think, worked really well because it was something meaningful and it's also a very, very unique name. Uh, so then I decided to call the, the album Back to Differ instead. The Back to Differ comes from just, I don't know, when I grew up, I was kind of the odd one out. Someone would say that song that's played on East Coast radio is really good. Nope. I beg to differ. Or Justin Bieber's an amazing musician. Nope. I beg to differ. <laughs> yeah, man. And then, and then obviously um, that, that makes a lot of sense looking at the name of, of the projects, obviously. And then the artwork itself now, um, you know, how does it sort of link to the name? Yeah. 
Yeah, sorry. So that's just the, the road less taken. In the lyrics, I sing about roads a lot. I think it's especially Oh Love, where it says, those roads I had to struggle down. I chose the long and windy way. So, yeah, often if you're going to beg to differ with everyone, then it's going to be a hard path. <laughs> so you can see a path in that photo kind of symbolizes the road less taken. Yeah. yeah. It's a very poetic man. Well, well done on that. Very poetic indeed. That looks like somewhere, is that somewhere in Hillcrest or in Janga or Elveston? Where is that? Yeah, that, well, this is where it might sort of lose meaning, but it's just a unsplash photo. <laughs> <laughs> and it's again, it came down to, listen, we need to wrap this up and get this thing up. <laughs> it really, it really looks like something you'd find, you know, out in Hillcrest somewhere, guys. But yeah, you guys really did a good job with that, you know, linking that name, you know, with the artwork. Really well done on that. So considering it's taken quite a while to get these songs officially recorded and released, now that they're out, how much do you listen to your own music? I actually listen to it quite a lot. I listen to it, obviously. Actually, Matt did the mixing for the, the album and final mastering and everything. So between me and him, we listened to it <laughs> a lot. And then that process, once we did that, I took a break from listening to it. Um, and I went back. And yeah, I, I have listened to it. I went, I've listened to it quite a bit. Um, mm. Yeah, I listen to it with other music as well. Um, and yeah, it's, it's yeah, I really been, I've really been enjoying it, yeah. So I've also actually been enjoying it, but it's, I think it's a bit different when we listen to it as opposed to how yeah. a fan would respond to you it. Can, because... You can end up being a bit critical, yeah. I suppose. I've been trying to not be critical. Me too. Um, when you listen to it after you've released it, because... When you're producing something um, and recording something, the, there's a sort of understanding that it's never, what is that line? The uh, song is never finished, only abandoned. Oh, that, yes. That line yeah. from Aching. I feel like at some point, a lot of people say this, at some point you have to, you have to be like, okay, enough is enough. This is what I wanted. Because you mm -hmm. can always do more. There's always something you can do. So I feel that I've been trying to listen to it almost detached from Single Street Park. Same um, yeah, actually, because, I forced myself. Yeah, because you'll just start like exactly. Yeah, you you'll go into the yeah. spiral. Yeah. Oh, of you say like, that thing different now, and I like that. Like, yeah, like, and you just so you cool. can't do that to yourself. Yeah. You'll just get yourself um, down. So yeah. I feel like listening to it detached from Single Street Park is is good. I've I've been enjoying it quite a lot actually. And That's to add to that, like what I've been doing, you force yourself to sort of not think like that, but rather take that energy and spend it on the next. Yeah, exactly. Know? Yeah. This is one for, for Durban, for the Durban scene, because, I mean, as much as, you know, you guys did say that Durban is dead, the reality is we are still in Durban. You know, when we're looking at, you know, gigs coming back, which sort of venues are you guys looking at playing at, you know, when it comes to rollouts and when you guys get back to gigging? Uh, let's, let's just focus on Durban now. Which venues do you guys say you guys are keen to go and play at and probably offer the best experience? I know we were talking about Durban being dead, but I feel like it is, in some ways, it's a little bit harsh. Um, it's sort of a thing that people say, and I know when we did our interviews, name of the drum as well, we also feel that way. A lot of people feel like Durban is like that in KZN as well in some regards. But I do feel like the thing that goes hand in hand with that, I'd rather say, I say it's lacking. I wouldn't mm. necessarily say Durban is dead, but I do feel that there's a lot of places in Durban that have opportunity. I want to say Cliffy, Cliffy yeah. from The Last Dagger. There's a lot of really cool craft beer places that are popping up here in Durban. Pubs and bars and, and things yeah. that actually want full but, bands. But particularly uh, craft beer places. There's, yeah. there's like S43, wow. there's East Coast Brewing. And Cliff, Cliffy from The Last Dagger is creating quite a nice scene around the metal and sort of more hard rock. And I think we'll fit in quite nicely there. Yeah. Quite excited for planning the next thing with him. He, he always has those rock evenings at Robson's Beer Hall. Yeah, Robson's Beer Hall, another one. There's quite a few. Um, and then if South Wolves ever listen to this, <laughs> yeah. we'd, like, we'd like to do something with you guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and then sort of like that's sort of like your Durban scene, I think, is... I think it's going up in terms of the brew houses, a lot happening there. There's a few other smaller places like Soul Sessions and that, if you can get in there. 
Pablo, Chris, Pablo, Pablo Honey, Honey is obviously cooking. And Pablo yeah. Honey is like is, we actually literally at Pablo Honey now. Yeah. It's birthday party. Yeah. And I was here yesterday as well. Oh my word. There yeah. were like three amazing bands jamming here last night. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. So I think Hillcrest has got a few things happening. Yeah, going higher up the Midlands actually has got a lot happening for it as well. More folky though. A lot more folky, yeah. but like uh, like we were saying earlier, Single Street Park playing acoustic is very cool. Places like The Myth and those places are very... The Myth is a great venue, especially for original music. Mm. It's music in the hills up in, in Hilton. And those sorts of places for sort of like the iteration of Single Street Park that's more on the acoustic side, um, mm. something like that. Mm. I think there are, there's very much potential for that as well. Mm. And me personally, obviously, from my background, I really am mm. um, looking forward to that sort of stuff as well, definitely. So I'd say, like, we'll go chill stuff from Midlands coming down into Hillcrest, getting heavier and heavier until we hit Durban. And I mean, I don't want to give secrets away and stuff now, but next album is potentially a lot more chilled vibes yeah, so, yeah. Than, than this debut one. I, I think Durban, there's definitely stuff in Durban that, like, all those venues, and I'm sure there are more that I haven't mentioned that are popping up. Oh. There's a few cool places around. There's a lot of people doing stuff, coming together and doing park shows where they bring in full sound gear and people get tickets. So it's like single day festival vibes, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, so those those hopefully will also pick up around here. Oh, come on, guys. Give us give us a little more. I mean, <laughs> when you mention that you don't want to give away secrets, you know, and that the next album will be a lot more chilled, Give us a little bit more, guys. Come on. We're super excited for this. What else can we expect from the follow-up uh, album that you guys are busy creating? <laughs> uh, yo, it's still very early days, man. We have been jamming a lot more acoustic stuff. Landon, I, I feel, has been, from from the creation part, been writing more. Oh, I don't want to say acoustic. I feel like just... He said to me the other day, we we're talking about it um, with this album. He felt like he just wanted to get it out. It was like an itch that needed to be scratched as well. <laughs> the heavy songs. The, yeah. Some of them, like, for instance, I'm going to say like New Year's Resolution mm. from the album. Stand Alone. Stand Alone. And then some other stuff that we didn't record that we've been performing live. That are quite heavy. Yeah, right? that are quite heavy and sort of, I wouldn't say, are they the heavy rock, right? Heavy Alternative grunge, rock, grunge, rock. that sort of stuff. Yeah. But I feel like a few other songs that have been brought to the table are feeling more mellow in some sense. And I feel like what Lennon said was he said the Beg to Differ and the stuff I've been working on from a live perspective is an itch that needs to be scratched and we've been scratching. So... <laughs> so it might and, actually and, just go a bit more mellow yeah, from this we'll, point We'll see on. what happens. Yeah, yeah, we'll see what happens from here. Yeah. But again, like, I mean, a song's going to be what a song wants to be, you know. If you sit down and you tap into that emotion and you write it and you tap into something that makes you feel aggro. Go heavy. Then it's going to go heavy. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you can't stop the song from being what it must be. Oh, guys, I'm I'm really excited for for that follow-up. I mean, just... The prospect of actually listening, you know, to the first offering and how you guys are trying to, you know, scratch an itch. And then, you know, obviously going out to the follow up to it. So it just gets me so excited that there even is a band in Durban, you know, that's wanting to release music consistently like that. It's actually exciting times. So thank you guys for, for that. I would really like to know the story of Shaka Khan. <laughs> Where's he? He's gonna come and show you. Oh gosh, oh, man! So you know, O oh, Love has these pauses. It'll kind of just pause, and then I'll start singing. And uh, Mark has this irritating habit of, <laughs> as the pause kind of hits its dead silence, and I'm just about to start singing, he goes, <laughs> and then I just burst out laughing, and then I can never. We can get the song. <laughs> like we all just start giggling and then just we have to start over. Definitely a, a practice thing. And <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a practice thing because I, I think I'll punch him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lennon just can't handle the shaka <laughs> <laughs> Considering there's four of you, has there ever been a situation where you've had to come up with a tiebreaker for like a decision? Uh, no, I, it's never really come up. I mean... Like when Lennon brought us on board, 
he is a businessman as well. So even though it is a creative project and we want it to be, and I think this is also very important when it comes to creative projects, because a lot of people who are, who take the creative project on and then don't look at those sorts of things end up breaking up and they have issues and there's arguments and stuff like that. So I think it speaks to the fact that we all have been in numerous previous bands. Yeah. You know, that we kind of just knew from the start. So I am the tiebreaker. <laughs> we agreed from the beginning. It was Lennon's project. It was Lennon's stories that he wanted to tell. We are we here to bring what we can to the table. Yeah. Decisions are always made very diplomatically, though. Yeah. Like if there are scenarios where sometimes the brothers that's in bed, <laughs> sometimes they think something sounds nice, and then Mark's yeah, we, like, no, but I prefer this. And then I'll just say, okay, well, you know what we generally yeah. actually do is we say, okay, let's jam at the let's one jam version. It. Yeah, we generally then we try. jam at the never, other version. Which, it's never then, a dead, it's never a dead. Yeah. No. Yeah. We jam it. Me and Nat tend to start with each other. We <laughs> we we are brothers. At the end of the day. If we do have anything like that, that it comes to the table, Landon is the tiebreaker. I mean, this is creative project. I'd say Landon is the tiebreaker, definitely. <laughs> so if you get to the point where you've got that headlining festival spot, who would you each choose as your supporting lineup? Oh, wow. I mean, there's so many. Scarlet Wool. I know there's so many great acts that are coming up in Durban right now or in, in Medicine KZN, Dolls. Medicine Dolls. Oh. Oh, I mean, South Walls. Ideally, just sharing a stage. I mean, maybe not even headlining, just sharing a stage with, for me personally, it's why I've never liked competitions around music. Like headlining is always, always like a slightly sore point to me. There obviously has to be a headliner, but I feel like a, a main stage slot would be cool for me. Yeah. I'd love to share a stage with guys like the Medicine Dolls, even like guys like, Jeremy Loops, I mean, next level kickstands, yeah. all of those guys. I mean, I'd really like to. I mean, and more like probably more long how like A King guys like that, mm. uh, Watershed, all of those guys. It'd be really cool to just share a stage with those sorts of names that yeah. are like sort of current South African like top top yeah, legends, or like yeah, guys who just really influenced music. Yeah, I mean, I think we really imagine really the cool. Congos. Yeah, the Congos, Ladies, Lapon Buzzer, all of those guys. I mean, yeah. Probably named a lot of guys who potentially isn't our genre, but I feel like I feel like just sharing, like having a main stage slot in with them. Yeah, with them would be very, very amazing. Yeah. So, last question on my side: Are you guys planning to play any New Year's Eve slots? And if you are, are you going to play New Year's resolutions? Oh, <laughs> so yeah, because it's a bit salty. Oh, doing poetry right there. So I poetic. That. Yeah. <laughs> um, unfortunately, not. We don't have any in the pipeline. I mean, yeah, we got, we got some plans for December, but um, no, nah, I think we're all going to be apart uh, over the festive period. I think, yeah, yeah. Like, been looking at a few festivals. A lot of festivals have like sort of. I don't know if they rushed together or they had a lot happening prior. A lot of festivals, obviously, having previous the, years. The dragon, what the bird, yeah, right? Smoking Dragon, Smoking the New Year's Festival and stuff like that. A lot of festivals have had previous years, which they've been trying to, like, sort of... Get back to. Back so to. So already closed. Yeah, their lineups yeah. have already been pretty much decided. Um, and also, given our sort of early release and everything like that, next year will probably be better for us and building up with sort of things opening up. Yeah, I think the plan is building up as things start opening. And we're very hopeful that January is going to start opening up. Hey, this is very beautiful, guys. I, I just want to thank you. Um, you know, I learned a lot about you guys. And I feel like this is a good closing point because, you know, we, we touched on pretty much everything. You know, you guys as a band, the members behind it, you know, the, your side project. <laughs> yeah. It happened. Yeah. And a perfect time. <laughs> Our stuck and gone man just came in to say... Yeah, he's just just checking on this uh, marathon of an interview. <laughs> <laughs> we basically can't thank you guys yeah, enough, thanks, guys. and yeah, we really, you know, we're looking forward to, to to seeing what the future sort of holds. Um, what are you guys' social media handles for anyone who's listening to actually follow? Yeah, it's easy. It's uh, Single Street Park. So Instagram, Facebook, it's all at Single Street Park, and we're also working on the website singlestreetpark.com that'll be launching soon. But in the meantime, just go follow us on Instagram. Listen, just Spotify. even if you don't, yeah, go Spotify or, or any of the digital platforms. Just even if you don't like it, just, you know, put it on repeat. Let play in the background. <laughs> <laughs> we don't mind. <laughs> 
Yeah, I haven't listened to Big to Differ. I think I think you guys will enjoy it. It's really yeah, really cool piece of work. It's been yeah. a long time coming. Finally put that together. Hopefully some folks enjoy it. And there's a lot more coming much sooner than what I think people will expect. I need to put you guys on the spot here because we need to close out with a song from Big to Differ. You guys like every single song on there. Which one is the goat? Oh, Yo, that's difficult. Personally, um, but Lennon's a tiebreaker, so he's going to have to be. <laughs> <laughs> top, I'll give you top four for me. Uh, would be Big to Differ, obviously. Yeah. Stand Alone, Oceans Apart. This yeah, time say, around, yeah. those are my, I was, I was those also going to go with Big to Differ. Yeah, so I'd say, yeah, they all, I'd say on that four, we've got a broad spectrum. Most people seem to like Oceans Apart. Yeah, Oceans I've Apart. I've had like one, yeah. so many people come to me and say, oh, Oceans Apart is my favorite. Yeah, but I, I think in the band, um, Big, Big to Differ is our favorite. Yeah. It's just something clicked when we started jamming that song. That's definitely a favorite between four of us. I guess it's it's decided. Are we going to play out with Big to Differ? Excellent. So cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us at the party. Yeah, it was awesome. We had a bit of a party here. I think it was yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it was always cool hanging out with you guys. Eh? Like, seriously. Nat, Nat was really bummed he couldn't be here. Um, so, yeah. I'll let him know it went well though and he'll definitely be like tuning in to listen to the interview and everything so yeah all right awesome then guys before we close out I also want to thank Megan for being the greatest of all time and yeah guys I mean until next time we're playing out with Big to Differ um, and it's been an amazing chat thank you for tuning in um, it's going to have to be bye for now and we hope to see you again next time mm-hmm.